from wherever you are uh, at this moment, I thank you for joining us uh, via live stream or download via YouTube. I appreciate the fact that you are on with us tonight. We're going to get challenged tonight. So hope everyone is uh, ready for a good godly challenge this evening. The title of my message tonight is this. Is your house in one accord? Is your house in one accord? Because it's time to give up the ghost. It's time to give up the ghost. So it's a challenge tonight to understand that I'm not talking about a horror type of ghost that Hollywood produces. That's a bunch of nonsense. But I'm talking about, are you willing to give up the ghost of your own self-will? Because your house needs to be in one accord with God and only God. It cannot be in two accords, part of you wanting to serve God and the other part of you wanting to serve your old sinful flesh. It can't happen. We're coming to a season, we're coming up to actually the Feast of Pentecost, you know, the, the Feast of Weeks, where we should be receiving power from on high. And if the title gives this away, if your house is in not one accord, you're going to bypass this feast, this gathering where we should be gathering, or excuse me, getting power from one high. So if you have your Bibles, uh, please turn with me to Mark 14, 32 through 38. Mark 14, 32 through 38. And this is Jesus praying in the Garden of Gethsemane. And I'm going to lay a little um, foundation here before I really get into the scripture that hits this home regarding the, the subtitle of time to give up the ghost. In verse 32, it says, And they came to a place which was named Gethsemane. And he saith to his disciples, Sit ye here while I shall pray. And he taketh with him Peter and James and John, and began to be sore amazed and be very, very heavy. And he saith unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful unto death. Tarry ye here and watch. Here's Jesus exceedingly sorrowful unto death. I want you to picture this for a second. You know, Jesus was the epitome of obedience to God's word, God's will. He fulfilled the law. He didn't do away with the law. He fulfilled it. So here he is, ex sorrowful, exceedingly sorrowful unto death. So really, what was the final submission that God was asking Jesus to do? And that was really, Jesus, are you willing to die? Are you willing to die? So if Jesus, who knew what his destiny and destination was, that was to be the Passover lamb of God to fulfill the feast and to renew the covenant so we could have a relationship with God Almighty. Even he was a sorrowful one to death. So if Jesus was, I am sure you are sorrowful of truly giving your life 110% to God Almighty. So, what did Jesus do to confront this issue? 
How many people want to know what should we do if we are struggling with laying our life down for God? All right. Well, thank you for saying, yes, I do. In verse 35, and he, meaning Jesus, went forward a little and fell on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him, knowing that he was going to be crucified. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what thou wilt. See, Jesus had to, again, go back to God and say, really, God, is this your will? Nevertheless, not what I will, but what you will. So when God the Father is asking you to do something, and you're struggling with it, do you just toss it off and think, okay, well, God's not going to ask me to do this again? If I just ignore him for a little while, or if I don't read that part of Scripture for a little while, God won't ask me to do it. Hmm, I don't think so. So Jesus prayed. Then he gets the answer from God. Okay, I know what my will is. It's settled in me. I need to die. In verse 37, he comes and finds him sleeping and says unto Peter, Simon, and sleepest thou? Could you not watch one hour? How many of you online or in the house? Leadership has said for you to do something. Said, yep, I'm right there with you. So they go off. They start plowing the head. They come back expecting you to, do, to be doing something, but you're sleeping. Hmm. Could it be at that moment in time, you weren't willing to give up the ghost? You weren't willing to give up your will for God's will to be done in that moment in time. Jesus says in verse 38 to them, Watch ye and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. The spirit truly is ready, but the flesh is weak. See, Jesus lays out this battle so clearly. The spirit is truly ready, but the flesh is weak. Well, what spirit was Jesus talking about? Is it our own personal spirit? Or is it God's spirit that's in us that is ready to do the will of God? I want you to think about that. In getting back to this division, house in one accord... We're going to stay in Mark, and here's why we need to figure out what spirit do we need to get rid of so we can say, nevertheless, your will, Father. Mark 3, 24 through verse 25, Jesus says this, And if a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. We are the temple of the Holy Ghost, the temple of God. That means the only spirit, since God is a spirit, that should be inhabiting our house should be the Holy Spirit. So if there's this battle of two spirits going on, Jesus clearly states, that house ain't going to stand. It's going to fall. You want an example of a house that was not in one accord? Thank you for saying yes. Genesis 4, 6 through 8. I'm just going to quickly go through this. Many of you know this story of Cain and Abel. The Lord in verse 6, says to Cain, Why are you angry? And why is thy countenance fallen? 
See, they just presented, we just came through tithes and offerings a few, a few minutes ago. Well, Cain and Abel offered up an offering unto God. Cain's was, or excuse me, Cain's was not accepted. Abel was accepted because Abel gave the first fruit. He gave the best. In verse 7, God's saying to Cain, if you do as well, shall you not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lies at the door. Hmm, house again. So sin is trying to get in. And unto thee, as it continues in the verse, and unto thee shall be his desire. And shall and thou shalt rule over him. See, we should have dominion over sin. Sin should not have dominion over us. If we're still struggling with serving God, but we're serving sin, guess what? Two spirits going on and a house divided can't stand. You're either going to serve one master or you're going to serve the other. Hmm. So do you want a solution to get your house in one accord? Thank you for saying yes and amen. Well, we're going to go back to Jesus in the garden. Or actually, excuse me. He goes through the garden and he's now hanging on the cross. In Luke 23, verse 46 and 47, this is so powerful. And if you grab a hold of the result of Jesus saying what he says to God the Father as he hangs on the cross, I pray that the struggle that you're dealing with in serving two spirits goes. In Luke 23, verse 46, and when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And having said thus, he gave up the ghost. So how many of you have said to the Father, into your hands I commend my spirit, and you give up your will? You just give it up. And the result that happened immediately was powerful. Verse 47, now when the centurion saw what was done, what did it say he does? He glorified God, saying, certainly this was a righteous man. See, when you give up your will for the Father's will, you take on this righteousness, this lifestyle of godliness that other people are going to see and glorify God. But they're not going to glorify God. You struggling in serving your old sinful will. What they're going to say is, Certainly this was a hypocrite, and he really doesn't love God. That's powerful. So how many of you are willing to give up the ghost tonight and receive the Spirit of God? So let's take a quick look here, real quick, at what were the results of, of a house being in one accord? I know I'm running out of time, um, but I'm going to quickly go through these. The results of a 
house being in one accord. And I thought this was pretty powerful uh, looking at Luke uh, uh, again. In Luke 1, 8 through 11, This is powerful for the church. This is powerful for the church. In, in Luke 1, 8, it says, And it came to pass that while he, meaning Zacharias, John the Baptist, uh, dad, well, soon to be dad, he wasn't dad yet, executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course. According to the custom of the priest's office, his law was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. And when the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense, so this whole congregation was praying one accord, and the priest was doing what he was called to do. In verse 11, and there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. Hmm. So it sounds like, church, we have to be in one accord. We can't be trying to serve sin and God when we're gathering together. It's got to be for God, for God, for God. No hidden agendas, nothing. It's got to be all about him. Another example of a house being in one accord. Acts 1, 13 through 14. Apostles were appointed and sent out in Acts 1, 13 through 14. They were all in one accord. Praying. Why? Because they were trying to figure out who was going to take Judas's place. In Acts 1, 24 through 26, verse 24 says, And they prayed and said, Thou, Lord, which knowest the hearts of all men, show whether these two thou hast chosen, that he may take part of this ministry and apostleship, from which Judas by transgression fell, that he might go to his own place. Verse 26, And they gave forth their lots, and the lot fell upon Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. So when there's unity in the house, people praying, Apostles will get raised up, sent out. Hmm. Well, why do we need, need this new power, this new spirit? Let's look at Isaiah 32, verses 14 through 16. See, it's time that we, that we receive this new spirit. A new indwelling coming up on Pentecost. We need it to do what God is calling the church to do. In Isaiah 32, 14 through 16, I'm going to read it out of King James. Because the palaces shall be forsaken, the multitude of the city shall be left. The forts and the towers shall be for dens forever. A joy of wild asses, a pasture of flocks. Hmm, sounds like a house wasn't in unity. Because the palaces shall be forsaken. However, there's good news. Verse 15. Until, until the spirit be poured upon us from on high. And the wilderness be a fruitful field. And the fruitful field be counted for a forest. Then, when we receive this spirit from on high. Then judgment shall dwell in the wilderness. And righteousness Remain in the fruitful field. Hallelujah. So how many people are ready to get their house in order so it's not left forsaken? And the spirit shall be poured upon us from on high. And our wilderness be turned into a fruitful field. And then the fruitful field shall be counted a forest. I see abundance, restoration, deliverance. So are you ready to give up your will to get in one accord to go into all the world? You need to be. In Acts 1.8, but ye shall receive power. Everybody say power. 
Thank you. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. You're going to start out in the city and just go forward and keep branching out like a rock that drops into a puddle. Your obedience is necessary for this to take place. Why do we need to go into the uttermost parts of the earth? Mark 16, 15 through 18. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. We can't go into all the world hanging on to our old self, our old ghost. We need to say, Father, I commend my spirit unto you. So then we can receive this spirit from on high. It only comes from God. So are you ready? I believe that you are. I believe that you are. And don't worry. Dead, death of your old self is a good thing. So I'm going to turn this service back over to Elder Christie. Elder Christie, pray us out of here. Thank you, everybody. I love you all.